A few weeks ago, CGC made an announcement that they were going to start to recognize on the label those comics that were newsstands as well as those that were part of multi-packs. And when this announcement was made, I took some time to go through my collection to identify a couple of books that I'm thinking about sending in to be reholdered to get that designation on the label. I recently had a chance to speak with the president of CGC, Matt Nelson, and I was even more convinced that this was going to be a good move for me. The big question, of course, is which books should I send in? So in this video, I want to take a look at the books that I've pulled together, and I want you guys to comment in the comment section if you believe that these are some books that are worthy of going back in to be reholdered to get that newsstand indication on the label. Stay tuned. Reggie here and I want to welcome you to another one of my videos. As you heard in that brief intro, we are going to take a look at some newsstand comics that I am thinking about sending in to be reholdered by CGC. As part of my whole analysis about these books and whether these are the right ones to send in or not, I wanted to reference some information. And as part of this, I took a look at comicspriceguide.com. This is a pricing service that literally has the largest database out there of priced comics. They have more than 1 million comics in their database. And so I felt like this was a great place to go to reference the values of the newsstands versus the direct. And again, I just wanted to factor this into my decision making on whether I should send these books in or not. And I definitely want to encourage you guys to comment below as well. And I will tell you, I found some interesting things as I was going through the data and you'll you'll hear what I mean in just a second. The very first book that I am thinking about sending in is this book right here. It is a uh, Spider-Man black costume book. This is Marvel team up issue number 141. This book actually came back a few years ago. I think I, I think I sent this one in to be graded, uh, but it, it is a 9.6 with white pages, of course, from CGC. It is, of course, a newsstand. And this book ties with Amazing Spider-Man 252 for the first appearance of the black costume. A really cool cover right here. And you can see the newsstand down there in the corner. Now, when I looked this book up in comicspriceguide.com, what I saw is that the newsstand is valued at $390, which is a nice chunk of change. And I wanted to compare it to the direct edition. The direct edition basically sells for $100 less at $290. And again, one of the great things about comicspriceguide.com is they have this massive database, but they also delineate the values of newsstands versus direct. And I find that to be extremely helpful to know how these, these two books are being priced by the market. The next book that I'm thinking about sending in is this one right here. And I know for a fact that I sent these in because these came out of the 100K collection. This is Batman issue number 359. And it is a really nice copy of this book. This one came back 9.8 with white pages. And this book is the first full appearance of Killer Croc. And I will tell you, I may have made a mistake with this book. I may have made a mistake. And here's what I mean. This book actually has, as a newsstand, has a price of $650. But when you look at the direct edition, the direct edition, according to comicspriceguide.com, has a value of $820. This book was released in 1983. Now, here's the thing. In 1983, the newsstand was still more abundant than the direct. And as a result of that, the direct edition actually has a higher value than the newsstand. Now, where did I make the mistake? I made the mistake of selling the direct edition. I had a couple of copies of the direct edition at a 9.8 and I sold them and I kept the newsstand. That is definitely a mistake on my part. I mean, again, the value of the book, even with the, the newsstand, is still a healthy amount of money, no doubt about it. But I probably should have referenced comicsprice.com before that, and potentially I would not have made that mistake. 
The next book is one that I also sent in to be graded by CGC. I sent this one in years ago, probably back in 2017, early 2018. It was when I was super slap happy with getting books graded. But this one, of course, is a newsstand. This is X-Force issue number two, the second appearance of Deadpool, a really cool book, no doubt about it. Uh, in many ways, maybe an undervalued, underappreciated book in comparison to his first appearance, but it is a 9.8 with white pages. This one as a newsstand is, has a value of $290, which is not bad, $290. The direct edition, according to comicspriceguide.com, has a value of $100. So there is a nice delta that exists between the newsstand and the direct. Same can be said for the Marvel Team Up 141 and honestly for the Batman 357. I just made a mistake there. So this next stack of books that I'm going to look at are probably books that many of you have seen a few different times if you uh, subscribe to the channel and if you follow me on Instagram. I've spoken about these books a lot. And so the very first one that I want to show you is X-Men issue number one. This is volume two. This is the Jim Lee book. And we're going to start off with the Magneto book. This is a newsstand edition of this book. This was, I think I set a record for the most sold book. I do believe, I think they sold 8.2 million copies of X-Men issue number one, volume two. And I've always advised people that if you are going to buy this book, try to buy the newsstand. I've always said that. Now, when you look at the value of the newsstand of this book, it has a value of $240, which is not bad at all. The direct edition, $88. $88 for the direct edition. Again, widely printed. The 9.8 of the newsstand has a healthy premium above the direct edition. And as you would imagine, you probably know what's coming next. Uh, this is X-Men issue number one. Uh, again, volume two. This is what I call the Gambit cover. This is the Gambit cover right here. Now, what's really surprising about this one is that this book, according to comicspriceguide.com, has a value of $41 versus the direct edition at $100. Now, what do I make of that? I think potentially that they have not seen recent sales of this specific book in order to update the, the value in the system. That is my personal belief because I would believe that the higher value would be seen with the newsstand the same way that we saw with the Magneto cover. I think that we would see it here with the Gambit. That's my belief. And maybe it's something that has to be uh, tested out. Maybe I'll ask the folks over at comicspriceguide.com about that question, but definitely a really cool book, no doubt about it. And you'll see again, part of the reason why I believe that maybe it is a, um, a, 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 data issue in the sense of there is no sale because there are not a lot of these out there to warrant them being able to update the database is because of what you're going to see next and, and technically what you saw with the Magneto book. This is X-Men issue number one, volume two. This is the Wolverine cover, at least that's what I call it. This book at a newsstand, 9.8, has a value of $310. Compare that to the direct edition, $100. Again, I don't think that that's just because Wolverine is on the cover of this one. I believe that it is because this, again, is a harder item to find, a little more scarce than maybe the direct edition because of that massive print run. The very last book that I'll show you here is X-Men issue number one, volume one. This is the Storm cover. And the Storm cover at a 9.8 newsstand has a value of $188. The direct edition, $92. So again, I think that that gambit that I showed is probably a data issue because all of these at a 9.8 newsstand have a higher value than the direct edition. So those are essentially the books that I am thinking about sending in to CGC to be reholdered. I'm not sure if I'm going to send all of them. Uh, it, I don't know. Sound, sound off in the comment section. Let me know what you all think. In my mind, I feel like if I send the X-Men book, I have to send all the X-Men books. Like you can't separate those out. I think you have to send all of them. So I, I am I am vacillating as to what I send. Do I send all of them? Do I send 
some of them sound off. Let me know what you think. Uh, I also want to acknowledge the new sponsor for the Reggie Collects channel. That is comicspriceguide.com. I have been using this site for years and years. I've recommended it to a lot of people, and I'm very happy that they have now signed up to be a sponsor of the channel. Huge shout out to everyone over there at comicspriceguide.com. Again, a massive database. I definitely want to encourage you guys to click the link in the description. Go over, check out what they have to offer and if you're feeling frisky go ahead and sign up and get yourself a membership as always if you need to reach out to me feel free to do so on instagram at reggie collects take care